Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we have a really cool but somewhat familiar tool called the LDTK or the Level Design Toolkit. And to be honest, this might be one of the best 2D level editors that's out there and staggering how fast it's improving. Now it may immediately look familiar to you because this is actually a rebrand of sort. Once upon a time, also known as September 26th of this year, I covered a tool called LED, which I called an awesome new level editor. Uh, it's from the creator of Dead Cells. It is is really, really cool. So I covered it back then as LED. Now, right now it's actually been rebranded as the LDTK. So even though I covered this one somewhat recently, September, October, November, oh my God, that's only two months. <laughs> it feels like seven years for some reason lately. Anyways, the Level Design Toolkit is the new name for it. And in the meantime, there's actually been a number of improvements on it. It's, so we're going to take a look at it again. As I mentioned earlier on, it is open source 2D level editor aimed at indie developers. Uh, it is created by a guy who worked on Dead Cells, among other uh, games. You also use it for a number of game jams. You can see here it is a powerful level editor. Tons of features in here like auto rendered layers, selection duplicates across all layers, advanced custom entities, um, undo redo and then you've also got hacks api support so you can easily export your game out in this case probably as a json file which you can import into your engine of choice but if you happen to be using the hacks programming language uh you're getting a lot of nice functionality like automatic um uh, type F difference or inference from the hacks macros that are exported out. So there's a ton of features and functionality here. And what we are going to do is go ahead and take a look at what's new. By the way, if you're interested, uh, since I covered it in September, I believe we go back to, uh, I think that was point three. Three, somewhere around this point. You can see here there have been a number of releases to it. Um, so it, it's just one of those things that is improving at a staggering rate. All right, so let's go take a quick look. Here we can see uh, this is uh, LDTK, formerly known as LED. Uh, you can see here a top-down type level, and you can get an idea of just how much is going on here. There's some just really nicely intuitive features. Like you can see here, little sliders. Boom, I just increased out my map. And you notice it automatically filled in. Well, that's because there are a number of rules defining how this map is created. By the way, if I want to resize my map to be smaller, boom, I bring it back. So it is really, really quite simple to work with. You've also got control over uh, the obvious things like what the, uh, the grid size to start with, the size of each cell. You've got a number of different layers here, layer support. And we also have auto tiling from the various different tile sets that are available. So you can see some of them in action. You got an entities layer here. That's things like your text right here. And you set the properties of your text. My text, like so. I've actually got it overlapping another layer, so let's kind of move that off. And there you can see the end result of that. On top of that, we've got a number of different walls. You can actually click here to hide them. So you're seeing how all these auto walls are being generated. But look here, I can click on the rules for generating those walls. And you see here, we've got a ton of control over how it works uh, with its corresponding neighbors, how things all work together. And as I'm mousing over things, you're noticing here on the right side, they're highlighting ones that were created in that manner. So you've got a ton of control over how outlines work. And you've also got control over, so you can see here the shadowing effects that are being generated there. That is another option you have here as well. So you've got a really cool control set going on here. You can also randomize things if you so wish. I don't know if I want to do that. It might mess this guy up pretty good. But you've noticed you've got a number of different layers going on and they can have multiple different rules on each different layers. You also bring in custom tile sets and you can see this little body down here and painting things is simple. So let's just fill this place up with corpses. There you go. So you get an idea of the basics of how this guy works to create your tile-based map. So that is your layers functionality. We also have entities. Entities are basically data, and you've got a ton of different options here for what you can do, a ton of different types. You can uh, apply arrays of data to things. So the cool thing here is with project entities, you can actually put, so if you're making an RPG style game, you can actually put code into it or, or data into it so that you could actually access it using your code. And the nice thing is this is all, if you're using hacks on the other end, really easy to grab. But otherwise, it is just JSON and pretty much every single uh, framework or um, programming language out there has a JSON library of some sort, which should be make it pretty easy for you to get a hold of this data. So you can add uh, multiple different fields in and create an array of values from types of integers, floats, boolean, strings, multi-line, enums, and so on. So say for example, you could have um, 
a shopkeeper and to find his in inventory, or I guess you could actually just do an array of uh, strings that this person responds with and so on. So using project entities, you can add the logic into your game. Next up, we get over here into enums. Enums are special types of entities, uh, special value types of entities. Uh, could, for example, list the pos um, list of possible enemy types. And so then you could instance a, an individual entity out that you created using a new. So you could create an enum of entities, uh, add an icon for each particular one, uh, add various different values in, and then you can place that enum in the world and have it pick, you know, the enemy type that spawns there from a list of the options. So basically enums are, uh, a list in which you can only select one active generally is that that is how an enum is implemented so it gives you even tighter ability to have you know again like the example they gave multiple enemies in one data type so you could have you know an enemy spawner and have it pick from the group that are in the enum and then finally we have the tile set support you can have multiple tile sets in here so this is the top down example going on here create your own tile set easy enough you basically select an image file how it is split up and specified and it will extract out the tiles for you so here you're setting 16 by 16 tiles um no spacing in between them now it's interesting you can't do tiles that are different sizes but as you saw you could have multiple tiles like what we've got with this guy so uh, that selection works together you can also generally multi-select things and paint them in like that as well but again with the uh the custom rules here the cool thing is as you start uh drawing things in it's the rule system that's going to uh, take place there and handle things for you and, and once you've got all these things set up it's going to be making levels a really quick task for you because of that logic being done there so essentially that is uh, a quick hands-on with this guy it's again it's improving at a pretty staggering rate and i actually do like the new name better than led it's just led was a little too generic so i can definitely understand why they did the rebrand that they've done and then when you're done you basically go up here to your project settings you can save it out and you can save it as an ldtk file or as a json file and as you can see there are a number of samples that it ships we'll look at a couple of those in just a second and again json is a um, javascript object notation it's a very standard simple to understand simple to grok format that as i mentioned earlier on pretty much every single game engine and programming uh, language out there has a library for dealing with json so getting your data out of the maps and rendered in your world shouldn't be that challenging but if you are working with hacks you are doubly blessed because you have so many options there so i'm going to come back here and we are going to do a load instead where's the load i thought it was here all right, one second. Okay, so you can't load over an existing project. You gotta come up here and ex exit out like so. Uh, so here's my recent, you see we got a number of different samples available here. So this is like the first screen you get when you just start up. Uh, go ahead into the samples. You can see a number of ones there. We saw the top down example there. Here you can see a 2D platforming example. And you can see again, a bit more of how background textures are handled and the rule set for handling those textures. And you can see where each one is being applied like these edge cases here. You can see the logic for handling that and so on. Uh, same time, uh, we've got collision layers here. So you can see various different collision layers are defined on the map. Uh, and then you got the entity layers or various different things that are in the world. So for example, our player entity is available right there. And here you can see some of the data attached to it. So this guy has, this looks like it was probably an enum of inventory. So you can only have one thing selected at a time. So if we go over here, look at the entity section, you can see we've got a couple more here. So here's an array of enum items that's been defined. And we should be able to see all of the various different values that are in there. So like go over here to the enum. So here you can see one of the enums in action. It's the enum of type item. And you can see you've got various different options. And they've got both a uh, string value and a graphic value attached to them in this particular case. And you can basically go ahead and keep creating new ones. So you can grab a graphic for it and a chunk of stuff all right so there you go so an enum allows you to pick or select literally just one out of the list of things that is there like so uh, so that is another one of the examples that's here we can exit out don't save that and we've got a couple of others so we've got some ones here that show you kind of uh, the auto layering system and how it can be used so the cool thing here is you can basically just start filling in on the map like so and the auto layering will figure out how things interact so for example if i cut into the existing map it'll just figure out how to do it so here we go cut through the water nothing works. And then I can switch here and start creating water and we just start filling in water and it fills in the tiles as it makes the most sense to do so. So you see here, see we got some gravity started to take effect. So if I here do a quick drop down, you're seeing some, you know, of the watery wavy kind of things coming into place there. And then here you've also got lava. We can switch over and start making some 
some more lava, and it just sort of auto tiles around the area. And we could do a ladder in place as well. So let's drop a ladder down and so. And so you can see how it kind of, once it's properly set up, makes your job of creating maps a very, very easy thing. All right, so that is um, now what we were calling in the level design toolkit, what was previously called, called LED. As you can see, again, we're in the release notes. There are a ton of updates quite frequently on this guy. A few other things about LDTK. It's an open source project and even cooler, it is under the MIT license. Uh, which is quite a liberal license. So you're going to find if you come in here and take a look at the source code. Uh, so for example, source main, no shock to anybody. The source code is in the hacks programming language. I am a fan of hacks, so I don't find this a turnoff at all. Um, and it's also um, LDTK since it was called lead. Uh, thanks to the community has been ported to Mac OS and Linux, which is definitely a nice progress as well. So if you want to get involved in the development, it is an open source project and it is under a liberal license. Also, if you want to support the guy, um, there is a sponsorship option available right here. Uh, then uh, there's also the hacks API. So if you want to use your results with hacks, uh, this makes uh, life a lot easier to work with. And there you can see using the hacks lib installation system, you can easily get this guy up and going. We also got some, uh, hacks code samples available right here, kind of show you how to, uh, basically use, uh, the results from the, uh, LDTK in a hacks project uh, in an easy manner. So if you want to work with the hacks programming language, this is hands down the easiest level editor you are going to find and one of the most powerful. And it'd be interesting to see uh, with this release, if we end up seeing um, this becoming more and more popular because for the longest time, tiled was pretty much the gold standard for 2D level editing. Now there is definitely some competition in that space. Now they've also taken a very different look uh, from a graphical perspective and, and kind of the approach they, they look like completely different programs uh, but if you are looking for a level editor definitely uh, check out LDTK and if you just looked at it when I covered it back a couple of months ago with lead it has come a long way including to several different new platforms so anyways uh, that is LT uh, LDTK a very very interesting project with a much better name something that you can actually google for unlike LED which is literally um, a massive acronym already in use. So a good idea to rebrand here. And so I thought I would cover it again. All right, so that's it. Let me know what you think of LED slash uh, LDDK down below. Also, let me know, do you like the level design toolkit name better than LED? Uh, let me know in that comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.